Welcome to the latest episode of our Home Theater Share videos that the DJ and I are putting out every week. And with us, uh, or every so often, I should say. And with us today is Mike Schramm, and uh, he has shared his home theater with us. Mike, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Mike's video, this is textbook. He sent this to us ahead of time. That's what we're going to be watching. If everybody could do this, Ara, this is so great. It's so easy. <laughs> And it, I can't wait to go through this video for all the listeners. I'm very excited because this is a fantastic video of a fantastic theater. As am I. And when I Thank got you. the video, I just said to myself, you know what? There's not much for DJ and I to do except roll it. So maybe that's all we need to do here. All right. All right. I'll hit play and let's roll it. You take over from here, Mike. All right. Well, this is the uh, my basement entrance. This is the door to get down to my basement. Uh, it's a 7.2.4 system down here. So as you open the door and you come down the stairs, there's, you know, just little knickknacks and memorabilia stuff hanging on the wall. The one thing I have to point out for, you know, for my wife is that she made me that sign. Uh, it says the Schramm Theater on it. And uh, I have to give her a shout out for that because that was awesome. She puts up with all the loud noises and everything else that comes from this basement. So thank you, honey. I appreciate it. Did she go to school for art? No, actually I did. Um, <laughs> she did it. She, she does these craft night things with her friends where they make stencils and paint things through on the stencils and all this stuff. So that was one of the things she, it was actually a Christmas present. She, she made it at one of those craft nights with her friends and gave it to me as a Christmas present. And, you know, these are the little touches that make a home theater. Mine, I don't have any of these touches, and I'm very envious. Every time I see you all's uh, theaters, I say I need to start doing some of this stuff. Yeah, it, it was it was really cool. It was a total surprise. I didn't know she was going to do it. So when I opened that gift, it was it was pretty awesome. I thought that was pretty great. We got to sell those to people. You got to put those online and have her make them for everybody. Because I'll take a. Break I should for tell it. her that. Yeah, I agree. She can create yeah. an Etsy store and sell that with no problems, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, so this is heading down my stairs. Um, the opening is actually really small, which makes it difficult to get large items such as furniture down the stairs. Um, we actually thought about having to tear out a wall just to get the furniture down, but we made it. Um, so yeah, this is what my basement looks like as you come down the stairs. Um, I got some speaker cable there that still needs to be tucked away a little bit better, but uh, you know, there's always something to work on. I've got my Rocky poster. There's really no fun backstory to the Rocky poster other than I like the movie and I found it, so I bought it. Um, Back to the Future poster, on the other hand, that's you, you can't you can't pick a favorite movie. I don't at least at least I can't pick a favorite movie. But Back to the Future, I'd say is top five, maybe. I don't know. That's that's a hard call. But Back to the Future, I feel like is just something that you got to have. It's one of the best. Absolutely. You know, I, I agree with you as well. Uh, Back to the Future is one of those movies that uh, this house here, we watch every single Christmas when everybody's home for the holidays. We just uh, put all three of them on and watch them uh, one a night. I don't know what it is about that movie, but we all love it as well. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It takes me back to my childhood. I just, I just love it. It's awesome. So yeah, now we're looking at my, uh, that'd be my right rear surround speaker. All of my Ear level speaker, actually, every all the speakers except for the subwoofers are all clips reference. Um, the rear surround is a clips R15M. Um, those are some acoustic panels that I made. I honestly I don't know how well they work if they work at all, but I think they look kind of cool, so I kept them. And then just some more dick neck stuff. I got my Infinity Gauntlet. I got my uh, Meal Near. That's one of those wax. Mjolnir is one of those wax melter smell good things and it lights up blue and all that stuff. So that's kind of cool. Oh, I got an offer for you for that infinity gauntlet. We'll talk. After <laughs> <you>. <laughs> all right. We're, we're selling uh, his wife's artwork and uh, you want to buy some of his uh, goods here. <laughs> eh, not exactly. I'm going to buy that one. We're going to, you'll see, okay. you'll see, he'll all be right. happy and we'll, we'll put it out on, We'll put it out on Twitter when we're done. Okay, very it'll cool. Be, it'll be a few <laughs> cool. weeks. Sounds good to me. 
So underneath that table right there, that's um, one of my PB2000 Pros. Those were the latest addition to the theater, the basement area. I just got those last year, and uh, I love them. I, I was upgrading from a, a, was a Klipsch 10-inch R10 SW, something like that, which was fine. But oh. when you take that 10-inch Klipsch out and put a SVS PB2000 Pro, it's just a world of difference. So that was, that was a huge upgrade that I was really excited about. Yeah, I love those SVS. I have the pb 2000s as well i just bought mine a little too early i don't have the pros so i'm a little jealous of you having that little um you have the app where you can play with it yeah i actually um got a mini dsp for christmas this year so i kind of use that instead of the app now but the app is really convenient it was pretty cool before i before i got the mini dsp i was playing with it on the app all the time Oh, I'm going to have to talk to you about the DSP too. Cause <laughs> no, I've been right. told by a bunch of people online about get adding a DSP for different movies where you bump up certain ones and stuff. So that's, you know, like I've fun. heard about that. It, there's, there's a pretty steep learning curve to it and I am not that good at it yet, but I, I heard you like for like Thor Ragnarok, for example, you can pump up the mm-hmm. bass on it to make it sound better. I'm just, I'm not that exactly. far into it yet. Yeah. But there's my, uh, there's my left rear surround, and <laughs> those are my son's Legos, because the basement is a family area, and he's into his Legos, so we try to clean them up, but, you know, <laughs> he's... Honestly, all right, I love this. When I watch this video, I love this part of the video, because I want people, everybody watching, it's like, we live in these theaters, and... Most people, like, they clean, they dust, they do all this stuff, and they clean up, and Mike's like, Hey, no, this is what I li- this I love my kids. This I love their town. toys. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah, don't worry. One day they grow up and you don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to push it. back on that, Ira. My son's 24 years old, went to college for engineering, and there's he plays still plays with his legs. No, no, I mean, he probably picks up after himself is my point. <laughs> Want to bet? Uh, <laughs> you know what my daughter's rooms are off limits to me too because they said dad don't come in here because every time you come in here you get upset at how could people live like this and i'm like yes exactly how do you guys live like this <laughs> so yeah okay so maybe i was wrong mike yep. you got a long road ahead of you <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah no, a lot to look forward yeah. to enjoy enjoy your theater yes yeah, definitely that'll <laughs> be your escape okay. It'll, it's your escape there you go yep so that's my uh, that's my left surround. I try to butt it up next to that support beam as much as possible so that it's not just floating out in the middle of the room, especially with the kids running around and playing and stuff. And fingers crossed, no tragedies yet. So hopefully mm-hmm. that stays okay. A couple of big giant bean bags that kids use. We can actually open those up when the kids have sleepovers. We'll lay them out on the floor. They can lay down and watch a movie or just hang out, whatever. My little concession area, we just breezed by it. I actually put it on Twitter a couple of days before uh, before I recorded this video. I was, I think it was Todd Anderson was asking about the concession area. So I took a picture of it and yeah. put it on Twitter. And I said, hey, don't don't mind the empty fridge and the almost empty candy rack. And, you know, I was getting some getting some grief for that, but that's all in good fun. So we it, it's full again, just so you know. The fridge has got drinks in it again. So we're, we're good to go on that front. Nice. So yeah, that's the concession area. Got the blackout curtains, obviously. Trying to keep it as dark as possible. And then we enter the actual seating area. The uh, sectional, we got that pretty much when we got the house, which was six or seven years ago now. I would like to upgrade it to actual theater seating, but that's kind of low on the priority list. Honestly, the couch is comfy. It's just, you know, I do. I would like theater so seats just because. I have a take on that too. I agree. The theater seats add a little bit of, you know, making it more like a theater, but there's nothing in my mind more enjoyable than really relaxing and plopping up on a couch, put your feet up and just enjoying yeah. a movie. So I wouldn't, if it were me, I'm happy with them just the way they are. Uh, I don't, I, I think you're also, as a family, you have a young family, you're a little more connected like this. If you were to put in theater seats, you're yes. a little bit more disconnected. Yeah. And that, it, if I was going to do theater seats, I wanted to do um, the the love seat in the middle and then two single chairs on the sides. 
Yeah. So that we could still, you know, kind of cuddle up together if we wanted to. But like I said, that's, that that's pretty low on the list. If, if anything's going to happen, I got to get a new TV. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the big one. <laughs> well, if you if you've got uh, what is it twenty five thousand dollars to spare, you can get that LG ninety seven inch OLED. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Costs as much as a I small could, car. I, I could, they'd be all right with that. So what I'm pointing to right here that's um that's where I, the closet that I keep all my Blu rays in. Um, just some more posters. The Dirty Dancing poster. That's another nod to my wife. She's really not a big movie person. But she does like Dirty Dancing, and that was her that was her addition to the basement was the Dirty Dancing poster, and I, it's kind of cheesy, but <laughs> but if I had to put it someplace, I got to put it in the corner because you know. <laughs> oh, I knew you were going there. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what Dirty Dancing is up there. That was one of my favorite lines from your video. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got um. The Guardians of the Galaxy poster is simply because I like the look of the poster. I like the movie as well. The movie was good. It's not up there with my favorites, um, but I thought the poster would look good. Uh, that the TV is a it's a 2014 model year. It's a Sony XBR uh, 70X850B. It's 4K, but it's not HDR. Um, it. It's fine. It gets the job done, but I would like to upgrade it. I'm ready for something new. And then we have the Spider-Man uh, poster. That one is because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Uh, my buddy was actually working in a movie theater when that when the movie came out. What was that? 2001, maybe something like that. 2002. Yeah. And uh, Two, yeah. he actually that's the actual movie poster from the theater he was working at. I've held on to that since college, and I just just got to put in uh would have been last a year a year just a little over a year ago so fall of 2020 i finally hung that poster and i've been holding on to it since 2001 but wow. um yeah that, that was pretty cool right in front of the spider-man poster we have the klipsch r28f got two of those obviously right and left and a klipsch r25c for my center channel um again i no complaints on any of those fronts. They all sound good to me. They work really well. I'm happy with that. There's my second PB2000 Pro. Got that up front. Yeah, the TV stand inside of that is my Onkyo TX-RZ840. Um, that's powering the Atmos speakers, the four Atmos speakers that I have up in the ceiling. Uh, it's, for those four speakers, it's perfect. On the other side, uh, that's my Emotiva Base X A7. That's powering all seven of the ear level speakers. Below that is a Panasonic uh, UB BP. That's the A20. Whatever the whatever the letters are, it's the A20. Um, the stand itself, I actually made. I'm not nearly as good at woodworking as Ara is. I've seen his speakers; those are super impressive. Um, Thank you. But I needed something deep and wide to hold that stuff without getting things too hot. So I actually made that stand, the TV stand myself. And then I believe, yeah, we're going up to the Atmos speakers. I just took the drop ceiling tile out. I made my own little frame and covered it in white speaker grill. There's four of them up there. And then for the Atmos speakers themselves, I used the exact same bookshelves that I have as my surrounds, the Klipsch R15Ms. Um, oh, I'm pointing out I have HVAC ductwork right where my left rear Atmos speaker should be. So I can't do much about that. Just got to live with it and do what I can do with it. So then when you remove the, the speaker grill, that's how I mounted my speakers in the ceiling. I just made a little wooden bracket. They're actually angled down there. So they're pointing right at the main listening position. Um, Funny fact, I didn't realize this until I watched my B-roll that my speaker is backwards. I on the the wooden <laughs> frame that I made, I made the little cutout for the woofer so that, you know, nothing is obstructed and I I I was clueless until I watched the B-roll and I saw this, oh well, son of a gun. So then I went up and it's now fixed, it's now put in correctly. But 
Yeah, I, I had no idea. Just completely missed that until I saw the video. You know what's funny? I missed that so. too until you just pointed it out just now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I saw it and I was like, uh, maybe he just doesn't want to block the sound coming off the tweeter. Yeah, that, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wasn't sure, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> but yeah, I saw it and I was like, hmm, that's weird. But yeah. it, and it, what made me think that it was wrong is it's such a perfect cut and you yeah. can see how it lines up perfectly. But I just, you know. Yeah. I actually went and checked the other three speakers just to be sure. I like what you did there as well because uh, angling it down. Now, you could have just turned it upside down and had it firing straight down the way most Atmos speakers are. But I guess because this was a little bit yeah. behind you, you wanted it to kind of go into the listening area. So I think that's a really cool solution. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I saw, um, I, I don't know the, the guy's name. His, his YouTube video is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Home Theater Gurus. And mm -hmm. uh, he was mentioning in his video that the if you can, if you can angle your Atmos speakers to the listening position, you should. Oh, oh okay. He, he said so. I'll try it. So I like it. It sounds <laughs> good to me. But yeah, these. So back to these movie poster boxes. Uh, the boxes themselves came from Family Video. That was a video rental store just in my neighborhood, actually. They just went out of business in October of 2020. They held out that long. And they had one of those everything must go sales and they were using these boxes to, you know, advertise new releases or whatever. And I asked them, I said, how, how, you know, if everything must go, are those movie, those boxes for sale? And they said, sure are. And they asked, you know, I asked, well, how much do you want for them? And they just kind of mm, 20 a piece. Like, <laughs> wow. Yes. Uh, yes. That geez. is done. Yeah. They, they told me that it, it's up to me to, um, get them off the, to disconnect them and get them off the walls and stuff. So I had to, I had to I ran, ran home, grab my own tools, went back to the video rental store, used my own tools to get them off the wall. Tried not to be electrified by the wiring that was still <laughs> live. And they gave them to me. So 40 bucks. I got those two boxes all in, brought them home, spray wow. painted them black, hung them on the wall. Wow. So. That's fantastic. That looks beautiful. Yeah. They look great. Thank you. Thank you. I have that same Spider-Man poster in my theater. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've noticed. <laughs> it's a good yeah. poster. Mine doesn't light up, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is actually, it's more of a, it's meant to be like a access to my water main for my house. But it's just positioned oh. so perfectly that I threw some shelving in there and put my Blu-rays in there. Um, the bookshelf itself is on wheels so that, if the defecation hits the rotary oscillator, there you go. Got it. Got it. I can just wheel, wheel it right out of the way and get back and turn the water off if I need to. So yeah, that's and then that's my Blu-ray collection, and then just one more quick shot of the basement, and that's it. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful room, and I, you know, it's interesting. Now you were saying the only thing you want to upgrade is your TV, and that's really a good way to do it. You've got a theater. You're happy with it. And TV technology changes so much that it's probably good to hold off on making that, uh, you know, that commitment to something really um, expensive because something's going to change. And as you build out the rest right. of the room, you let you let the technology settle out. You can go ultra <laughs> short throw if you want. You can just go a large screen flat panel or you can put in a traditional um, a pr a traditional projector if you want. You, you have a lot of options available to you. Yeah. And it's one of those things where my current TV, it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So other than just wanting something more, I can't, I sometimes have a hard time justifying it when there's nothing wrong with what I have, you know? And when I, we're talking know, that me, I'm in the same boat as you I have a TV downstairs. It's 70 inches. It's a Vizio. It's a 4k that doesn't support HDR. I bought it a while ago and yeah. it, it, works but i want something bigger i don't necessarily i mean of course i'll get something better as well but i i'm not right. complaining that it's not working well my only complaint is i want something bigger and uh <laughs> when you when it first came in 70 inches you're thinking wow that's huge but yeah you know, i've got 100 inches upstairs in our media room 
And there is no reason why I can't have 100 inches downstairs. I got the wall space for it. And these TVs, they don't yeah. weigh that much. Or, again, go with another ultra short throw. That's a, a slam dunk to get uh, installed. Uh, that, that's the only thing that, um, you know, that, the reason why I want to change. And I think you're, you're in the same boat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's. I, w- I would like to have HDR. I would obviously like a bigger size. But, you know... It'll happen at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. But, you know, it's just one of those things. And you have the room here. I mean, the way, not just the room itself, but the space on the, on your entertainment center that you built. Yeah. Uh, you've even your posters, you've got room in between there to go. What you said, that's a 70 that's inch. 70. Yeah. And it's, you e- easily could fit 85 on that yeah. desk. No problem. It would look great. And like Ira said, um, a short throw would go perfect in here. Um, especially where you have a light controlled room and everything. Yeah. Um, my buddy just bought a short throw and he's loving it. He put a 120 inch screen in his living room. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the nice yeah. thing about the show, so, the nice thing about the short throw is with the screens that they use you, and because the light source is so close to the screen, you don't lose a lot of the light going across the room. It's pretty bright. Even in daylight, it looks better darker but you can easily yeah. watch it during the daytime without there being any issues i honestly i've never really considered an ultra ultra short throw i've had my eye on a oled so i maybe i should do some research check that out a little bit well there's your, if, if you, you like the detail if you like the detail i would say if you and you're not looking to go super big i would look into oled yeah but if you like the size and a and decent hdr uh, sh- ultra short throws good yeah he he nailed it yeah, I should the, check that out. The, your better picture quality is going to be with the oled but it's going to be easier to get a larger screen at a lower price with the ultra short throw gotcha yeah I, i'll have to check it out I keep my options open and you know just see everything that's available oh yeah you got options in this room it's a great room mike <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate it's fantastic. that. Thank you've, you done a wonder, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. Mike, thank you so much for sharing your room with our viewers, and we really appreciate it. If you'd like to share your room with our viewers as well, send either myself or DJ an email. I am Ara at HD Guys, and DJ is uh, DJ at the Bright Side. No, uh, what do you use? The Bright Side of Home Theater at gmail.com. Bright Side Home Theater at gmail.com. Yep. And we can, uh, we'll, We'll get your um, theater on the on the air for everyone to see. And, uh, if, of course, like and subscribe to this channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. And, Mike, tell everybody, how much fun was this? This was so much Did you have fun. I really doing this? this. It was easy. It was fun. It was, I, I loved it. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thanks for coming on.